I'd like to welcome everybody here tonight. Give a special thanks to the friends of the Bear Lake Township Fire Department um, for putting this on and, and getting this started. It's, it's a group that came together to help communicate some public information about the fire department for us. Um, and in particular, to help us start our process of replacing our aging fleet of vehicles that we use to help service our community. Um, tonight we'll be reading excerpts out of the book Population 485 in celebration of World Book Night in America. Um, we'll be joining over 6,200 other communities which are also involved in Book Night all across the U.S. The beauty of this non-fictional book is that it's a chance for people to hear from real-life first responders and firefighters about their first-hand experiences of actual events, the consequences and how it affects the folks who drop whatever they're doing and come to the aid of others. In the book, Mike states that he was called out 106 times that year. Um, in 2012, Bear Lake Fire Department was called out 222 times. So the subtitle of the book is uh, Meeting Your Neighbors One Siren at a Time, and we all certainly can relate to that. No one on the Bear Lake Fire Department will ever discuss or gossip about any run we go on, firstly because of the patient's right to privacy, and secondly because this is a private matter. Sometimes trivial, but often tragic, we respect that. Because of this wonderful book, when you hear about New Auburn, Wisconsin, with a population of 485, you can actually imagine that you're listening to stories about Bear Lake Township and the population of 1858. Thanks to World Book Night America and Mike Perry in particular, every member of the Bear Lake Township Fire Department will be receiving a gift of a copy of the population 485 tonight after our reading. Um, and without much more ado, we're going to hear some comments from Mike Perry um, on this. Not yet. Not ready for you yet. <laughs> <laughs> he sent out an email earlier this week, um, and, it, and it reads, The purpose of this post is to offer my heartful thanks to those of you, both givers and readers, participating in World Book Night. After the word went out and givers started signing up, I quickly realized I couldn't manage to personally thank everyone in the manner they deserve. So I hope this post will go a little way toward doing that. Population 485 is basically that old Can You Go Home Again book. It's been written many times from many perspectives in my case. I wrote about returning to my hometown of Newborn, Wisconsin after a 12 year absence and rediscovering the place and the people by joining the local volunteer fire department, fire and rescue department. Oh, you must be very brave and noble folks, say, and I, and I reply, no, I had a pulse and a valid driver's license, <laughs> and I was home a lot during the day. Plus, my two brothers and my mom were already on the department, so there was some peer pressure. <laughs> for me, one of the lasting joys of Population 485 is when I'm somewhere for, away from home, and someone says, your town is just like our town. No matter how personal and regionally specific you get, you find that some things are universal. Wherever you go, I say the accents and the number of signs, number on the signs, change, but the people are the same. There's a chapter in Population 485 called My People, and it's the most difficult thing I've ever written. Not difficult in any painful sense, but difficult because I so wanted to get it right. I don't know if I did, but that chapter expresses why I'm so honored and grateful that the book was chosen for World Book Night. There is this idea that only certain types of people belong in certain places, and that only certain types of people would be interested in art or dance or reading books, and World Book Night actively works to change that. I moved to a farm in a different fire district in 2007, but I still get up to newborn the last January days I hung out there in the beer tent, now beer barn. No matter where I'm standing when I sit, I am blessed to be from and of newborn Wisconsin. And apart, from the part, and apart from the part of my heart reserved for my wife and children, the single most meaningful privilege I've ever experienced was to stand beneath the yellow helmet up there at the top of this post and serve for 12 years besides my neighbors as a member of the New Auburn Area Fire Department. The swamps grow spongy and pungent. Standing water goes warm and soupy, clotted with frog eggs and twitching with lava. Along the ditches, here and like stalks of canary grass shoot six feet high and unfurl seed blooms. In the fields, the clover pops its blooms and corn trembles for the sky. 
If you are approaching from the sky, you would see farmland neatly delineated by tilled squares and irrigated circles. The forest, mostly hardwoods and new growth pine, butt up against fields terminating abruptly, squared off at the fence line. The swamps and wetlands, on the other hand, respect no such boundaries and simply meander the lay of the land, spreading organically in fecund hundred acre stains. The whole works is done up in an infinite palette of greens. There is a road below, a slim strip of public two lane, with a faded blacktop running east to west, and then bends at Jabowski's corner, like an elbow. In the crook of the elbow, right in the space where you would cradle the baby, is a clot of people. My mother is there, and my sister, and several volunteer fighter fighters, and I have just joined them, and we are all on our knees, kneeling in a ring around a young girl who has been horribly injured in a car wreck. She's crying out, and we're doing what we can, but she feels death pressing at her chest. She tells us this, and we deny it, telling her, no, no, help is on the way. I do my writing in a tiny bedroom overlooking Main Street in the village of New Auburn, Wisconsin. <clears throat> Population 485. 11 streets, one four-legged silver water tower. Seasons here are extreme. We complain about the heat and we brag about the cold. Summer is for stock cars and softball. Winter is for Friday night fish fries and snowmobiles. After a good blizzard, you'll hear their Doppler snarl all through the dark. And down at the bar, Sludge will outnumber cars. The farmers who came to town to grind feed and grumble in the cafe have faded away. The grand old buildings have gone. There is a sense of decline, or worse, of dormancy in the wake of decline. But we're not dead here. We still have our Friday night football games, polka dances, bowling. If you know who to ask, you can still get yourself some moonshine. Although methamphetamine has become the favorite home brew. Every day, the village dogs howl at the train that rumbles through town, and I like to think they are echoing their ancestors, howling at that first train when it stopped here in 1883. Maybe that's all you need to know about this town. The train doesn't stop here anymore. This is, as they say, is where my roots are. Their trick is in reattaching. About a month after I moved back, I dropped by the monthly meeting of the volunteer fire department. The new Auburn Fire Department was formed in 1905. The little village was just 30 years old, but it had already seen its share of change. The sawmill that spawned the settlement ran out of pine trees and shut down before the turn of the century. Forests gave way to farmland, and New Auburn became a potato shipping center. There was always something coming and going, but then in 1975, the state converted the two lanes of Highway 53 to four lanes, and rerouted them west of town, and the coming and going pretty much went. 